Hello and welcome to the Supercast. I'm your host, Superintendent Anthony Godfrey. Today we take you into the world of Harry Potter with potions, wands, dragons, and wizardry. It's all a part of one of the most exciting weeks for third grade students at Black Ridge Elementary School. But this year, due to school dismissal, teachers had to work their magic to make what is called Fantasy Week happen in homes with virtual lessons that had students thoroughly engaged and excited about learning. Let's start with third grade teacher Becky Mariani, who explains what Fantasy Week is all about and why Blackridge wouldn't be the same without it. Interviewing over Zoom, of course, making sure that we are socially distant. And in the background, it really looks like you are part of the House of Ravenclaw. Tell me how this all works. Well, I actually am a Ravenclaw to the very core of my being. But um, this year was a little bit different. Every year in third grade, we study the different genres of reading and writing. And this particular year um, was a little bit challenging because when we got to fantasy, we have what's called Fantasy Week. And we create a school of witchcraft and wizardry and the kids go to magic school for an entire week. And they do all their reading and writing and even their math and all of their science is done in the realm of fantasy. So they're divided up into houses, just like they would be at Hogwarts, and then they go to the Blackbridge School for that week. So does the hat sort everyone into their house? It does. That's the very first thing that happens when the kids come to school is they go through a sorting ceremony. We put the hat on their head, and they get sorted. Wow. And uh, is it competitive throughout the week? Um. Yes, <laughs> <In my opinion. laughs> um, we're all vying for house points. And this is one of my favorite things about it because as they're sorted into the four different houses, I will have all four houses in my class and all the other classes will have members of the four houses. So instead of classes competing for points against each other, it's houses competing for points. So if my four, say if I have four or six Ravenclaw in my room, they may be doing really well, but Ravenclaw in another classroom might be struggling, so they'll balance each other out. At the end, we add up all the classes and all the points. Wow, so there's a, an aspect of, there's an element of unity and competition all at the same time. Absolutely. That's exciting. I know that um, um, competition can be very motivating for students. Do you see a high level of engagement during Fantasy Week? I would say it about quadruples. <laughs> yeah, they want those. But they will do just about anything to get those points. And this year was kind of fun. We've been able to do some things online that we couldn't do in the classroom. So they've had a little class, class point tracker, and it's tracked the points every day, and they've been able to keep track of the totals. And you should see the the chats going on as soon as that. You can tell when the house points have been updated because the, the chats just start firing. And you see them talking about, we're not here, we're here. So even from home, they're following this. So which house seems to be ahead right now? Well, today is the House Cup. Today, Dumbledore is going to present the House Cup. So I actually already know who won. Oh, but you can't tell me. Not yet, because the kids don't know. But when we left off yesterday, Ravenclaw had a slight edge over the other houses. Wow. And uh, I saw that... Dumbledore is in fact quite tall. <laughs> uh, who is your Dumbledore? Oh, I have got to tell you about this couple. There's a family in the neighborhood, uh, Suzanne and Don Johnson, and they do a lot of the, they help people with decorations and she makes these costumes. So Don is our Dumbledore. He dresses up and he comes and he actually would present the house. Cup. This year he, uh, he recorded it for us. But, and then Suzanne is our professor of so she teaches some of our classes as well. Wow. Well, the, in the photos, he's very convincing, and it's obvious the faculty has leaned into this all the way. Your outfit, the backdrop, uh, I believe you even have a cage in the background there with uh, who's in there. Yes. Wow, <laughs> look at that. You, the, the props are really something else. How long have you been doing Fantasy Week? Uh, I've been doing it uh, probably going on about eight years now. So over the years, do you accumulate more and more uh, uh, accoutrements to uh, recreate the uh, House of Ravenclaw? 
Well, my daughter, my oldest daughter moved out. And so her entire bedroom was full of these things. And she's not allowed to move back because I don't have a place to put them. So the answer to that would be yes. <laughs> Do people bring you things or or give you things because they know that you're Ravenclaw and they find Ravenclaw things to give you? They do, they do. But typically I wouldn't have been just Ravenclaw. If we were here in the classroom, I would have represented all houses. Wow. Um, but because it was different this year, we decided to do a head of house. So I've okay. got Ravenclaw and you know everything else. So you're head of house, but normally you would move from, from uh, you'd represent all the houses throughout the week. Because I wouldn't want one house feeling like they were favored. Sure, sure, when they're all blended into your classroom. What normally happens during Fantasy Week if we were not on a, on a dismissal? What are some of the things that you would be doing that you haven't been able to do? Well, that we haven't been able to do, there's quite a few. We would have um, a charms class where they learn to use their magic wand. And due to the, you know, beautiful remote candle situation that you can buy, we can actually teach some spells that make the candles go on and off. We can teach them the spell that makes water shoot. Because if you've ever gotten one of those little syringes and really pushed it, you can shoot water about 30 feet across the room if you really want to. <laughs> so we can get the Aguamente spell. Um, I've got a little wand that shoots fire. So there's a lot of things like that we can do live that you just can't recreate online. Wow, that sounds fantastic. And Quidditch. We can't play Quidditch. And one of you the play Quidditch. Oh, so tell me, how does Quidditch work? Okay, Quidditch, you get two um, classes in the gym and they have a broom. You cannot, if you do anything and you're not on your broomstick, it doesn't count. So their broomstick is a pool noodle and they have to be on their broomstick all the time. And there are different, the basketball has hoop, uh, hoop has hoops hanging from it, hula hoops. And they're worth different points depending on how, uh, how low they are. And then, of course, you've got kids with foam bats whacking foam balls at other kids as they're running around <laughs> trying to shoot baskets into the hoops. But the game doesn't end until that one seeker catches the bouncy rubber yellow ball that's uh, the snitch that's floating around. So Quidditch is, is huge. It sounds absolutely awesome and unforgettable <laughs> we think i think we're going to invite next year's class back to play with us and have a first and second year tournament since they weren't able to do it this year that's a great idea i'm sure it was a big disappointment to the kids that they weren't able to be part of the tournament i would imagine what are some of the things that you've done to adapt to online learning and and, and to move fantasy week online well, there's certainly making the recordings has been a big one. So we've done a lot of recording of the lessons. Um, that's one thing we've done. But I was uh, talking a little bit about herbology, where we get to do plants and we study plants. And so normally we would bring them into the classroom and we would study these magical plants and write about them. It's all about writing the fantasy. So this time we got to send them out into the world and they got to go out and look for plants that they found were interesting and write about them and create magical stories about the plants in the actual world. So that was a big difference. It's um, a great time to get them out into their world a little bit, get them outside and discovering some things. Yes, in fact, there was another one we were able to do differently. We do a dragon hatching. It's all about writing fantasy. So on one day they get this dragon egg and they have to learn to take care of it. And then uh, we were able to have them sit for 24 hours. So depending on the color of the, their egg, they had to find a certain conditions for it. Some had to be outside. Some had to be in a completely green place. Some would only hatch if they kept them in a very dark place. And so we were able to utilize them having to take their eggs outside into the world to get them to hatch. Where We couldn't do that here in the classroom either. Sure. Wow, that's, that's incredible. You have... Uh... There's no detail you haven't thought of in making this a, a full interactive experience. How did all of this start? How did Fantasy Week begin? Well, there is a teacher, and I need to credit her. Her name is Reagan Fay. She works down in the Washington District right now. She was trying to get her kids engaged in the different... They didn't seem to care about which genre they were reading. We were missing that question a lot on test. What genre is this? We don't know. So we started finding different ways to introduce the genres, and this is hers. She happened to be a Harry Potter fan, so it started with one day. There was Fantasy Day, and then, you know, it grew into uh, a couple of days, and now it's Fantasy Week, and next year we're talking that we will probably have to expand a couple of days to catch the tracks. It started with her. It's immersive, and that's the best kind of learning, and uh, 
I, I have no doubt that it's unforgettable for the kids that get to be part of it. And I absolutely will be there next year to witness Fantasy Week myself. I can't wait to see a good game of Quidditch uh, in person. That's fantastic. What is some of the feedback that you get from students about this event? Um, less this year, you know, because they're not right here in front of me. But if it's a good tell at all, when we went online with school and it started to look like we wouldn't be coming back, the single biggest question I got from parents and kids, what's going to happen to Fantasy Week? Because they know when you hit third grade, it's, you know, part of your third grade experience. So they didn't really ask about grades or how we were going to manage that, but they did want to know how are we going to do Fantasy Week? It's so, kind of a rite of passage. I'm a third grader, so I get Fantasy Week. It absolutely is. The feedback is, is just across the board positive. I think um, because it's so writing intensive this year at home, the kids have struggled with the writing a little bit. You know, we can't, we're not there to help them with the writing. And that's one of the hardest things to do from home has been writing. But beyond that, boy, they've been engaged and active and just doing their best. It sounds as if the fantasy week uh, activities just combine very nicely with what they need to be working on anyway, math, science, writing, reading. Oh, it's uh, curriculum based. Yeah. Yeah, and it's very uh, imaginative and creative and engaging. So, bravo. Congratulations. This is just fantastic. Is that your phone? It is, and I probably should have turned that down a long time ago. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I just figured it was probably me again. <laughs> no, that's Professor McGonagall. Oh. <laughs> that's what online school sounds like. Your phone and your computer is dinging constantly. <laughs> It's obvious to me how much you care about the kids that you teach. You've been working really hard to make things work for them. And still, amidst all of this, your fantasy week is really amazing. It's really mm -hmm. something. And for you to continue to do that and to go to all this work on top of all the extra work you're doing um, is just remarkable. So congratulations mm -hmm. to you and the whole team. I love it. I honestly cannot wait to be there next year and uh, and see it in person. Oh, you're um, always any, welcome. Anything else you'd like to tell us about Fantasy Week? Well, I can't say too much about the House Cup because that's going to be awarded in about 30 minutes. So I'm guessing most of third grade will be online waiting for that one for sure <laughs> to see who actually wins. But I just wanted to take a minute to mention um, that I don't know if you see the pictures, the kids are all wearing a school uniform. Yes. Those uniforms were donated by one of our families here at the class in at the school through Utah tax specialists. So he actually donated the shirts for Fantasy Week this year. And I wanted to be sure and mention that how much we appreciate that. And just what a great thing the community, the community has really come together and helped us out and been there. And there hasn't been anybody that said, no, we can't do that or we won't do that. It's more been, let's find a way to do that. So, and my team as well has, you know, they jumped on the crazy train with me and said, yeah, let's do this. Well, like I said, this is exactly the type of learning we like to see. It's teachers pulled together and unified. It's students competitive and, un and engaged and unified, but it pulls in parents in the community uh, in ways that you just can't replicate. So that's, that's fantastic. I'm so excited for you and good luck to each house <laughs> and, uh, May the best house win. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Stay with us. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll stop by Professor Jamie Watkins virtual classroom to talk with some of her Harry Potter impersonators and hear about the potions they've created to deal with COVID-19. To know what's going on in Jordan School District? Get updates on the latest information that could impact you and your child. Or just find an uplifting story about the good things happening in schools throughout the district. Check out our website at jordandistrict.org or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Let's connect at Jordan District.
Professor Watkins, it's nice to be in the Great Hall with you. Yes, you too. Thank you. I see uh, you have platform nine and three quarters behind you there. Yes. That's uh, really on impressive. <laughs> <laughs> on location. Nicely yeah. done. And uh, these third graders, tell me, tell me about the project they've been doing. So it's a Green Gotch track, and they were assigned this track on Wednesday. And basically, we just told them to use cardboard materials, tape, um, and paper. And then they were to come up with a track. The goal was to be the longest track, um, longest working track, that is. And as you can see, they've used a lot of different household materials and their creativity. And so far, we've had all successes. I've noticed that. Those marbles roll exactly where they're supposed to. Yeah, they're doing great. Mason, can you tell me uh, what house are you in, Mason? Slytherin. Slytherin. You have a bit of a Slytherin look. Let me see. Uh, you've got a little Malfoy going on, I think. <laughs> I see. Do you have a Slytherin flag behind you there, Mason? Yeah. That's great. Nice job. What do you yeah. like most about Fantasy Week, Mason? Um, that you get to use your creativity. What are some of the things you've done uh, creatively this week? Um, spells, this, um, potions. Spells. How did you, what did you do with spells? Practice on my sister. <laughs> oh, you practiced on your sister. Wow. What did you turn her into, Mason? Toad. A toad. <laughs> wow. Wow. Have you turned her back yet, or have you decided you like her better as a toad? I like her better as a toad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, fair enough. As long as your parents allow that, I guess you can uh, uh, do that as long as they'll let you. <laughs> they do not. <laughs> no, they did not like that. Is she your older sister or younger sister? Younger. Okay. Well, <laughs> that, uh, that seems about right. So all of the students were assigned potions classes, and they made potions, but there was at one point that they were able to make their own potion using their own creativity. Oh. So, Mason, tell me about your own personal potion. Hey, your potions book. You need to open up the big dusty old tome that I'm sure you have in the kitchen where it's written in. It turns you in whatever creature you desire. Oh, so the person who takes the potion gets some choice in the matter. Yeah. And what did you use to make your potion? Can you share that with us or is that more of a secret? What ingredients are in your potion, Mason? Do you want to hold it up and show us? Um, seven dragon teeth, dementor breath, three eyes of a toad, feather of a phoenix. Can you get those on Amazon or where do you go to get those? <laughs> dragon Alley. <laughs> oh, dra of course, of course. My mistake. My Mason, mistake. will you hold up your potion again? It looks delicious. It does not. <laughs> <laughs> did you try it no i have like 10 more days till i can 10 more Actually, days oh. first years are not allowed to drink potions oh yeah i see so if if you were to have some mason what animal would you want to turn yourself into a uh, cobra snake a cobra wow Watch out for those mongooses. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. David, can I ask you a question? What house are you in, David? I'm in Slytherin. Ah, you're in Slytherin, huh? What do you like about Fantasy Week? Um, that it's Harry Potter for Fantasy Week. What do you like about Harry Potter? Because it makes you to do magic and potions and this marble track thing. 
Sophia, what do you like most about Fantasy Week? Um, and that I get to be with my teacher and my classmates. What I haven't sort of met anyone. What's yeah, so Sophia joined our class while we were off track, and so we have never got to actually meet face to face. Oh, wow. Well, Sophia, I'll bet everyone's looking forward to meeting you too. Professor Watkins, what yes. do you like most about Fantasy Week? I like. Actually, to tell you the truth, the night before we released all of our lessons, it felt like Christmas Eve. It was so exciting, and I couldn't wait to see how excited they would be when they received their wizarding kits and all the pictures they've been sending in. It's just been so magical, and I just enjoy the magic part of it. I liked the owl pellet. It was fun. <laughs> tell me about the owl pellet, Sophia. Mine had one school seven Jaws and some other book, and I just liked it because my sibling did it. I had four it, skulls. Four and skulls? Like, Who's that? Eight, and eight Jaws, Mason. Oh, Mason. I have Tell four. me that again, Mason. Mine had four heads and eight jaws. Four Ew. heads and eight jaws. I had six heads and like five jaws. David, yours had six heads and five jaws. Wow. Mine, mine had like two, mine had like two mouse like two mouses, so like two bodies of mouses. It was really You had two I'm bodies glad of mouses. I didn't get yours. Two bodies of mouses in what? I found two heads. Yeah. Sophia, what do you like most about Fantasy Week? Um, I like making potions. I like making my picnic puff. What did I you make? Dragon. Oh, oh show wow. us your pygmy puff again, sweetie. What is that? The pygmy puff. What's a pygmy puff? Um, it's a little creature that can't survive on its own, so you, it, you, we adopted some. And what's its name? Um, Cuddly. Cuddly? Mm -hmm. That's a good name. It looks like it lives up to its name. Ricky Joe, yes. what do you like most about Fantasy Week? I like the potions. What potion did you make? I made a cure-all potion. So when my first call, it has a and what does that do? My cure-all potion, it my cure-all potion potion just cures all sicknesses or diseases. Wow, that's good timing. This is exactly the time we need a cure-all potion. <laughs> Great job, Ricky Joe. Thank you. Hey David, you have your hand up. Tell me about your potion. It has four or five. I have skulls, it's in my potion case, skulls, and some uh, five rocks, and uh, some uh, mermaid's hair, and it can, uh, like, it can make a clone of you, like, you just drink it, and you sit down next to you, and it will make a clone of you. Is the clone the one that you would make clear the table and load the dishwasher? Yes. Not... Just load, but also clean the dishes for me because I always have to clean the dishes like every day. And my sister. My phone would do my sister's dishes and my dishes. Oh, wow. So your clone would do all of the dirty work. Is that what you're saying? And I'll also do my homework. But only when it's bad homework. <laughs> only when it's bad homework. Not good homework like making potions. Yeah, I get to do the potions. You guys have some great ideas and some great potions. I love it. Hey, Sophia, tell me about your potion. Um, it's called By COVID. It, it, it's the cure for COVID. It's called By COVID. Yeah, so it will get rid of COVID night. No, just and it will get rid of COVID. Night. That's very practical and creative. Thank you for sharing this with me. I have not talked with any students that had such great potions before. So thanks, you guys. Great job. Thank you. 
Thank you, Professor Watkins, for all the extra work you're doing to make this happen when you already had lots of extra work trying to teach <laughs> online. So thank it's you. It's been this a lot is, of fun. This is fabulous. I can understand why it felt like uh, Christmas Eve when you were waiting to give the kids this experience the next morning. This is yeah. fantastic. And like I told uh, Professor Mariani, I cannot wait to see this next year. Yes. Yes, it is. It is phenomenal. She is definitely the brain behind all of this. <laughs> well, thanks again for spending time with me. Thank you so much. We're going to take one more quick break before we wrap things up with Black Ridge Elementary School Principal David Butler. I'm Stephen Hall, Director of Jordan Education Foundation. In today's challenging and uncertain times, it is more important than ever before to support one another. Here at the Jordan Education Foundation, we invite you to join us in making sure children are not going hungry. Your $10 donation to the foundation will help us feed one student for a weekend when food and meals may be very scarce for some. With food and hygiene supplies in the principal's pantries at Jordan School Districts being depleted, and in higher demand than ever before, every financial contribution made will help us to keep the pantries filled for students who would otherwise go without. The Jordan Education Foundation exists due to the generosity of people who care about kids. If you would like to donate to help children from going hungry, please visit jordaneducationfoundation.org or contact the foundation at 801-567-8125. Thank you. Together we can make a difference. We're here with David Butler, principal at Black Ridge Elementary School, to talk about Fantasy Week. How are you this morning, Mr. Butler? I'm doing great. How are you, Superintendent? I'm doing great. So this is Mr. Butler's first year at Black Ridge, and so he has experienced Fantasy Week for the first time as principal. Unfortunately, he has experienced it only online, but exciting things have happened this year. What was your first impression of Fantasy Week? You know, I have heard about Fantasy Week from the day that I got here at Black Ridge, and all of the kids really look forward to it. And um, when we went out of school due to COVID-19, the, the teachers were especially concerned that their kids got to participate in Fantasy Week. Um, seeing what they've done online has just been an awe-inspiring experience. It's um, just blown me away. Tell me about some of the things that have particularly impressed you that have been happening online to continue the Fantasy Week tradition. From what I understand, in the past they've decorated their classrooms and really brought a full experience to the kids. And so this year they really felt like with school being out, they needed to bring that experience online. And so we had a couple parents decorate their whole basement and um, they filmed videos and dressed up like Dumbledore and Ollivander and Professor McGonagall, um, even sorted the kids using a sorting hat and made these videos that the kids participated in learning uh, at home, but felt very immersed in what was happening. That's amazing. It's a great example of families and the community diving in and, and being connected to the school and what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they even had another parent uh, donate their student uniforms and the kids all got a t-shirt that they had to color the color of their ties and um, anyway, it, it, it was great to see everybody pitch in and help. Um, I know that man's name was Bill Kohler. We appreciate him um, from Legacy Accounting. He donated the uniforms. That's fantastic. Um, what is your role as principal in all of in Fantasy Week? You know, as the principal this year, I kind of um, watched. <laughs> uh, it, I know they had told me that I would be dressing up like Dumbledore and going into each of the classrooms, but where they did everything online, the parents really stepped up and did the um, 
all of the videos and, and everything that way. And so I have kind of just overseen and watched in awe as the teachers and the parents have been involved and made this happen. Do you have your Hedwig costume uh, ordered for next year? You know, I actually have been thinking about which one I'm going to order. So <laughs> yeah. we will, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards, um, oh geez, what's his name, Hagrid. Hagrid. Yeah, I yeah. think Hagrid would be kind of a cool costume. <laughs> I can I can see you pulling off a Hagrid. I think that would be good. Yeah. Um, what uh, What do you have next to you there? You've got the, uh, is that the house cup you have there? This large That's gold like trophy? Cool. Yes, this is the house cup. And every year we put the winners. And this year Hufflepuff won uh, ah. the house cup this year. And... Um, you know, so it's started in 2016 at Black Ridge, and you can see here that Hufflepuff is the winner. the The teachers love this because it helps the kids be something, be part of something that's bigger than just themselves and even their classroom. And um, they felt like they needed that more this year than any other year, uh, due to being out of school. It really is admirable, the effort that's gone into this. Teachers are already working so hard, doing so much extra. Parents are under stress. And for everyone to chip in and go above and beyond to make sure this happens no matter what and happens with style is really inspiring. Yeah, I agree. Anyone who isn't familiar with Fantasy Week might just think that it's all fun and games and that the learning stops during this week, but that's not true, is it? No, um, they <laughs> integrate all of the curriculum into these activities. Um, I know that the students do science and math and uh, a lot of writing. In fact, they do a research project and you know, one of the writing ex assignments, for example, was on a, a dragon egg that had hatched and they had to, you know, come up with their story, a narrative story on that. Um, they have watched and done these potions. And I think one of the students' favorite activities was a do-it-yourself potion, where they came up with, you know, what they wanted to put in a potion. Um, one of the students actually delivered one to the school, and I, it was really quite gross. It was a caterpillar in honey. And he wow. gave it to our secretaries. <laughs> so. And what what did he tell you that uh, caterpillar in honey would do? What was that potion's power? You know, I actually didn't get the backstory on that. The secretary just brought it in and goes, "Oh my gosh, what do I do with this?" <laughs> <laughs> well, as I spoke with students earlier, some of them uh, claimed to have cured coronavirus with their potion, which I thought was pretty awesome. Yes. <laughs> Um, it was really impressive to talk with the students and teachers earlier. Uh, what what have you seen from teachers that has surprised you through Fantasy Week? You know, just their sheer dedication. Um, you know, they've decorated little parts of their classrooms uh, to make their own videos. Um, they've worked with parents to make sure the videos are are just stellar they they've honestly gone above and beyond because they love their students and care about them so much um that that's what's been inspiring to me is we just have some amazing third grade teachers that are willing to stop at nothing to make sure these kids have this experience being new to the school were you surprised at how the community came together to make sure that fantasy week happened no matter what yes i was i was blown away to be honest um there, there were two parents i really feel like we need to mention it's don and suzanne johnson um don and suzanne johnson um just stopped at nothing you know don dressed up like dumbledore uh, and was out front at the school when all of the kids came to pick up their items um, he also dressed up like Ollivander and taught them how to use their wands at wand school. Um, <laughs> Susan Johnson dressed up like Professor McGonagall and did the sorting hat. She was also here uh, when the kids picked up their, their wands and their potions and their uniforms and everything else that got sent home with them. And so we really appreciate Don and Suzanne as well. Um, 
great, great parents. What are some of the reactions you've heard from the kids to Fantasy Week and how it's gone? You know, the kids have been just totally excited. Um, I, I've been surprised at how many emails I've received from parents stating that their kids are telling me or telling them to send me pictures. <laughs> and it's really fun <laughs> to see the pictures that have been sent. And it shows the kids sitting in front of their computers with their teacher on the screen dressed up and you know they're doing potions and learning how to use their wands and um it's it's just inspiring to see it sounds like the learning and the experience is completely immersive yes absolutely absolutely all right yeah. well thanks a lot for the time dave we really appreciate it yep, not a problem i can't wait to come next year i'll be there for sure okay awesome all right <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Thanks. 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 Yeah. We'll see you. We'll see you on the Hogwarts Express this fall. But in the meantime, remember, education is the most important thing you'll do today. We'll see you out there.